Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I think you're going to really love today's program. Mike Klan is with me. He's a 25-year sports broadcaster. Great stories. Uh, great stories from the community. Uh, talks about some local athletes, coaches, lessons that sports can teach us. It's a great, it's a great interview. Mike Klan, The Good Life is next. Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. So glad you joined us today. Uh, GoodLifeTelevision.org is where you can go for all the interviews. Uh, we've had so many great people over the last year, uh, so many inspiring stories, young people, entrepreneurs, public servants, law enforcement. We've kind of had the gamut. It's been a lot of fun. And those interviews are all there. There's also power clips where you can kind of see some of the some of the great uh, parts of those interviews. We've kind of divided them up into clips. So we hope you'll join us at goodlifetelevision.org. Thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited about my guest. Mike Klan is with me. Mike, well. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. What a treat. I, you know, I'm usually the one asking the questions. Yeah, I so figured that. I, I don't get interviewed that. too often. So. Yeah, well, just, you know, if you're grading me as we go, just be <laughs> gentle. I'm, I'm still in my rookie You're season. off to a good start. Yeah, thank you. Mike is... Uh, has been a long time sports, he's the sports guy in our community with KUIT, also the sports director at KCOY and Fox 11. Uh, Mike's been um, in kind of on, on the TV set in this town for a long time, 25 years? 25 years full time and even a couple years before that, part time and some free uh, labor too with uh, internships. So, really? Yeah. I knew early that that's what I wanted to do. So you look, you don't look old enough to have 25 <laughs> years in. Right out of college. Right out that's of college. amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Was this your dream? It was. I mean, obviously, I I think if I had one dream, it would be to actually play professional right, sports. Right. You know? Join the club. I yeah. think a lot of people, right? right? But yeah. um, I wasn't uh, very good, so <laughs> I always knew I wanted to be around sports, and uh, you know, I went to UCSB and. Went right to KCSB, the, the radio station there, and did a uh, sports spot, did sports updates there. I actually uh, was an announcer for some of the, the teams, uh, oh, really? volleyball, uh, basketball a little bit, some baseball. They get they let you do, you know, pretty much anything. Yeah. But, you know, what was incredible is I think it was, uh, you know, 1988, uh, as a sophomore, I – Got to go to Fort Wayne, Indiana to call the, the NCAA volleyball championships. Oh, UCSB really? was taking on USC, and it was I thought it was like the best day in the world. I'm like, I'm a sophomore in college, and I'm yeah. traveling to, you know, to cover the NCAA championships in volleyball. Wow. So KCSB actually is pretty legit. I mean, they, they'll send, you know, not all the time, but they'll send their broadcasters to Hawaii to cover a Big West match. And Really? Yeah, so... It's pretty pretty great. I was pretty fortunate to work there. Wow. Yeah. It, 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 before I go ask you oh, yeah. more, I, um, you've covered some of the biggest events in the country: the Super Bowls, World Series, National Championship. You've you've uh, won Southern California Gold Mike Awards, Associated Press Honors, Emmy Awards. So you've had a lot of success uh, doing this. Um, how has the your business changed in twenty five years? Oh. Tremendously. I mean, un honestly, like, I mean, I think it'll change it for the internet has changed where people don't have to just be at their house in front of a TV at right. six o'clock. I mean, we always are on social media posting our stories. I think more people watch my stories now on Facebook and Twitter than they right. do six o'clock, 11 o'clock. I'm not, you know, certain of that, but I have a good feeling that yeah. if I don't post those stories, I may not get a whole lot of feedback. But when I, I post those stories. Yeah. It's like I'll, I'll see somebody like, oh, yeah, I saw your story, you know, yeah. on Facebook. I or, watch them. That's how I watch Yeah, them. exactly, because yeah. you don't have to be tied down to right. the 6 o'clock or 11 o'clock news. And right. still a lot of people still, you know, prefer to watch the news that way. But with young people, I can't yeah. see them watching the news at, at 6 and 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's just not conditioned like that way. Right. I mean, it's kind of like instead of uh, people going to you, going to their TV set at a certain time to watch – you're pushing to them. Right. And then that's at their convenience. Exactly. On their phone. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's great too because, and you get more feedback that way too. Yeah. Because right. if you're just talking into, you know, the cameras and then that's it. And right. You don't know who's likes your story, who doesn't like it, what comments they make. And then 
on Facebook or something, they can make comments or, you know, right, like or something. Yeah, right. it's, it's kind of nice that way. Were you, where were you born and raised? I was born in Ohio, but raised mostly outside of uh, Philadelphia. So all my favorite sports really? teams are all Philadelphia teams. Really? Yes. Still? So, still. So, you know, when you're growing up, right. that's where you form your, your allegiance. So right. I love the Phillies, the Eagles, the Sixers. But that being said, I cover all the L.A. teams. So I actually have grown to really like the, have you? those teams. Yes. You know, there's not really a, a big rivalry. There used right. to be in the 80s with the right. Sixers and Lakers. Right. You know, there was right. a big rivalry. But they're not like the Phillies, Dodgers, not, not much right. rivalry there. The Eagles, Rams and stuff. So I right. enjoy the LA teams you know I don't I like the LA teams more than the Bay Area teams because I cover and I know more about the LA teams yeah. but my love is Philadelphia my before you even ask my best sports moment ever was I was at the Super Bowl to watch the Eagles win their only oh, Super you were. Bowl a few years ago upset the Patriots and wow that is an amazing sports experience for me at US Bank Stadium wow watch the Eagles upset Tom yeah, Brady and the Patriots one. so right. I went there you know and to, to enjoy the game, kind of expecting them to lose and to have Nick Foles, a backup quarterback, uh, get the MVP, and what yeah. a great guy he is. Right, And right. To, to pull that off, that was, that that was, was amazing. Amazing. So. amazing. Um, what do you, well, I, I was thinking about sports this morning, thinking about having you on, and I was thinking about, you know, the, the value of sports in a community. I mean, you've had this unbelievable show this Friday night focus on football um, in, in for 25 years? I mean, yeah, and I, years? I, I didn't even start it. We've enhanced it, but, you know, that yeah. was like late 80s. They started, you know, 10-minute show, and it yeah. grew and grew. I, I was just thinking about that. I mean, you know, high school football as an example is something that really kind of brings a community together. It sure does. Um, talk about kind of sports young people the, the kind of the value of sports in a community i just think it's just so positive people can rally behind it i mean even in the school year on a normal school year it really sets the tone for the school year i mean right you know i mean if you have a a, a good football team i mean yeah. you see that spirit out there yeah. i see it right. every friday night you know the, the band getting out right. there the cheerleaders right. the student body you know homecoming it yeah. really does and even if you're not winning it just brings people together yeah you know i really yeah. think that it, maybe it's because it's the first sport of the year pretty much but it's just like you know some sports lend themselves to more eyeballs you know right. you don't right, right. you don't see right, a right. big crowds of cross country even though right. it's a great sport right. it's just football it's just a gathering place right and you know of course sports just so positive how many lessons it, it teaches you right how, to, how you get through adversity, how you work as a team. You know, the, football is an example. I don't care if you have the star player. It's not going to, you know, you, unless you have, you know, 10 or 15, 20 more good players, yeah. you're not going to win. Right. So I think right. it's just great messages. Great lessons. Yeah. And, you know, and the thing I like about covering high school sports is it gives kids so much confidence when – I go out there or the news press goes out there or news hawk and does a story. I mean, the confidence it gives kids that they are actually shown in a positive light. Right. It's amazing. You know, and I don't even see it all the time. Sometimes I'll do a story and then the mom would call my wife and say, oh, he was beaming for a week because <laughs> oh, he showed a couple goals from water polo. Right. And that just makes me feel so good yes, yeah. because, you know, there's so much negativity, you know, right. these kids get on social media. Right. We talked about some of the benefits of social media, but there's so many oh, people oh, just, yeah. I, I think it's more negative, yes. right, than positive. Yes. And, and they get such negative feedback some way. And then to hear that, they're getting that positive right. vibe from just a, a quick little highlight. Right. You know, it's just. It's it, a big deal to be on TV. Uh, no, it is. So right? I'll tell yeah. the story. So you put, at the beginning of the quarantine, my boys start doing trick shots in the front. Of right. The house. I remember. Yeah. Like hours <laughs> days they were pretty impressive i have to and say. you put yeah. them on yeah i know you should have seen their face when they saw themselves on tv because right. yeah it's i mean yeah, it's to being on tv a big is deal. a big deal yeah. and i mean i gotta say this community is so fortunate not just kyt but the news press and the news their their coverage of local yeah. high school sports and even youth sports i mean you go in la you're not right. getting that. I you're mean, lost. the L.A. stations right. are only going pro 
and some college. Yeah. You know, even UCSB and Westmont we, uh, get way more coverage than they would a, a Cal State right. Fullerton or an right. Irvine because right. there's just no outlet there for that. Right. Right. And so this, and, and, and the round table knows that and, and the coaches know that and they're really appreciative yeah. of that fact. Yeah, that true. I mean, it really builds high self-esteem among our, our young yeah, athletes. Yeah, in sports, I mean, and, and you, you mentioned kind of the lessons sports can teach. I, I had a conversation with my 14-year-old son the other day. So we were talking about different things and, and it came up. So 2017, we're Dodger fans. My boys were devastated by the loss to the Astros. Yep. And then it came out that, you know, they're cheating. Right. Banging on the trash can. Yes. Right? Yes. And so we were talking about something, something else totally outside of sports. And he came back to that in the conversation. He said, but you know, Dad, like we learned, everything eventually comes out. So true. And so. I thought, you know, how, that was a painful thing. That, right. But, I mean, what a great lesson. Right. You know, you lose. Sometimes you, you lose fair and square. And other times you lose. And it's not right. But everything does eventually come out. I know. I, I uh, thought, what a great lesson. I'm always surprised at, at people who do try to try to hide stuff yeah. and organizations and teams. It right. always, it always comes, comes out. out. Right. It does. Yeah. It just, you just can't keep it silent. And it yeah. just, if you're up front, then you have nothing to hide. Right. And, and that's no a shame. Great either. lesson for life. It is. I mean, it really know, is. Yeah. And I, you know, I got to tell you, as a as a journalist, I appreciate that too. When, because even though sports, I, I cover mostly positive stories. When there is a negative story, I appreciate so much when the coach will will talk about it, or where the the the, the athletic director will meet it head on instead yeah. of just like refusing, no comment, all this, because it always comes out. Right. And you know, it, it's usually worse than if you meet it head on. Yeah. You know, and well, I think we can all take that because yeah. you know in life some things are not going to go your way you're going to make a mistake here and there yeah. just own up to own it. it get it yeah. out get it out here and it move on yeah that's yeah that's good we're solving a lot of problems here. <laughs> like, little less chickens uh somebody who wanted to go into sports casting I, I i had a dream of going into sports casting when i was at westmont college i we talked about this off air but i did have that dream for a minute Right. What's the path? You, you seem like you made this look pretty easy. You came right out of UCSB. <laughs> but a, a normal kind of situation, if somebody wanted to go into broadcasting these days, what is the path? You know, there isn't, it's hard to, you know, define a path. But for me, and I, I always suggest young people take an internship because school you know, we'll teach you about it, maybe how to do some of the camera, camera work or even get in front of it. But until you get into a, a newsroom or a newspaper, or even at your school, you got to see if you like it. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, I, any job. I mean, I, went, I had I had friends went through law school. Right. Became a lawyer and they hated it. Right? right. And then it's just like, then they've got to pivot, which is fine. You know, most people do change careers. Yeah. But the one thing you don't want to do, for me at least, is just try to do something that you're not even going to like. Yeah, because you're right. going to spend, no matter what profession, you're going to spend so many hours at it. Yeah. And, you know, there's no, no, let me tell you a secret, in broadcasting and in probably a lot of jobs, you're not working just 40 hours. Right. right. I mean, you're working, you right. know, 50, 60, 70 hours some right. weeks. Right? right. Not all the weeks, but some weeks. And if you don't like it, that's a big chunk of your week. And, you know, who wants to be miserable at their job? Right. So take an internship and first to see if you like it. Yeah. You know, and one thing I will encourage people to do, too, is be well-rounded. Because being well-rounded makes you more interesting, better writer. I mean, if you can write, you, you can succeed in journalism. But, you, you know, you write through the experiences you have in life. Right. So travel and read and, and do stuff maybe even out of your comfort area because the experiences will help you in any job. That all informs you. It, it does. It yeah. really does. I, I got to spend a couple hours with Vin Scully one time. Oh, and what you just said. I, I am. <laughs> and what you just said is what he said. When I was asking him for advice on SportsCast, I'm 17 years old. Right. He said, read. Yep, exactly. And he I said, had the same a news director told me that years ago, and he could care less about sports, right? He, he I mean, he, he didn't follow it. He couldn't tell you, you know, the Rams from the Dodgers, but he knew I liked it. And he just said, the more well-rounded you are, the yeah. better you will be. 
Right. And Isn't it's true. It yeah. is. In That's journalism really... and, and in life, I think, too. Right. That's good. So good. We need to focus a little bit, at least, on your wife, Delina. Oh. College friend of mine. Um, Delina is like the kind of person that when she sees you and you see her, you feel like she's always so excited to see you. <laughs> she is. She makes you feel better about yeah. yourself. Is it that? A, yeah. It's, it's really I fell true. in love with her. I How mean, did you meet her? I met her at the station. She used oh, you to, did? She was a producer. Yeah, she was a writer really? and a producer when she was at Westmont. And so I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I originally met her. She was a writer and a producer. And then we became friends. I mean, she was, you know, she's nine years younger than me. And so she went off to Club Med and worked and did all the, she was, you know, she, talk about well-rounded. She's, <laughs> she's good at everything she does. And she's done a lot of different stuff. And so, but when, when she came back to town from working at Club Med in Florida, then we started dating. But I got to know her originally at the TV station. When and, she you know, was in college. Yeah, when she was in college. And um, the thing great about Delina is what people say is she's everyone's biggest cheerleader. Right. She just, whatever you like and enjoy, she is there. She's all about support. it. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I kind of encourage her to become a life coach. So I think she really? should be, I should be, you know, and she's had some interest in that too. And But right now she's a wedding planner. She's an event planner. She was a great salesperson at, at Yardy Systems out I in Bermuda. remember that, yeah. So she's done a lot of stuff. She was an award-winning producer. So, so she's good. good at everything. And she's probably the reason why I'm still in Santa Barbara because, you know, I had, you know, kind of my eye on some different places I was going to work. But she was born and raised here, and it just made sense that we would we would stay here. And so, huh. and which I have no complaints either because right. I love I loved my job here too. But, right. you know, you – kind of always have like in tv you're, you're kind of encouraged sometimes to, to even go to a, a bigger market right, you know cover, right. cover bigger stuff or anything but I, i'm so oh, much, no right. i can't complain and yeah, yeah. you asked me one thing about how tv's changed one thing that's been great is the technology that changed to segue that's why i'm also here because this with the invention or the you know the cell phone technology has made it where we can go live anywhere in the world so we get to cover bigger events, Super Bowls and World Series, and that's appealing. So there's really no reason for me to go to these bigger places because that, you know, working in Santa Barbara, I can still cover can do these that. big events right. and also still have the best part of, you know, covering the local high school and college. That makes and stuff sense. Too. So anyway, Delina's great. If you, I may need to tag along with you at a Super Bowl someday. Oh, yeah. I can carry yeah. the bag. You can carry, yeah. I mean, dude, I, I, you know, with you all need. this kind of a setup, I think you're great. <laughs> you know, you, you might be asking the questions. <laughs> I might be carrying your bag. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Who's your favorite broadcaster of all time? My favorite broadcaster of all That's a great question. I love, the, uh, you know, Chick Hearn and Vince Scully. Right. Just because even though I grew up in Philadelphia, I was kind of young. You know, they had a great one in Harry Callis. He he died many years ago, but he was great for the Phillies. He actually was the voice of the NFL films for, for many years, too. Oh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's got a really distinctive voice, so I really like him. But I really like the Vince Scully was just, you know, the way he tells the game. And then getting to know kind of just what he's about, just a right. great person. Right. You know, that's the thing. When people ask me about my favorite athletes and, 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 and that, it's like, okay, I, I want to like you on the – the court or on the field, but what are you doing af outside yeah, right. of the playing field too? Right. Because that makes it so much better right. for me. Right. You know? When you find out your hero is actually uh, a great guy, I know it makes a big difference. I know. Yeah. It, it really does. And that's what's the great thing about covering, you know, like UCSB and Westmont sport. The athletes they attract yeah. are just superb. Incredible. And they really are. Like Shane Bieber is going to win the American League Cy Young Award. Right. You know, he right. is the greatest guy. The last two years, I've met him at Cottage Hospital visiting all the, the, the kids in the hospital at the holidays. He does, you know, really? he goes there on his own. The Indians didn't send him. UCSB didn't send him. He just one day called up and said, you know, I'm a part of this community. In the offseason, he lives here, works out in Summerlin, and he wanted to give back in the community. So he's the top pitcher in baseball right now. And he's like an MVP off the off the field. It's wow. just like it's like great stories like that. Right. It's just I mean, that's going to be my next question is is in your 25 years here, is there a coach or two that stands out, whether whether it be high school, college, in this community to you? 
Uh, well, I mean, I love John Moore. Yeah. I, I, lo I was sad to see him retire. Right. I mean, the round table, he goes to the round table and just is. He's a, a hero yeah, at the oh round table. Oh, my God. He's just yeah. great. But he's great. I'd see him, you know, you know, around town at the restaurants. And he was always asking about my kids and all that. And he, the quotes he would give at, at the round table, he's just really yeah. just inspirational. Yeah. I mean, just amazing. You know who I really liked, too, was Mark French at, at UCSB, uh, yeah. women's coach. He was just what he did for the community. I mean, he would only, he'd have his players in and out of the community. And just so, again, I... I you know, I, I love that the coaches that win, but you know, just I just love the the coaches that also give back to right. the community. Right. You know, it's just it's great to see, and, and 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 most of the high school coaches are like that. You know, you know, whatever sport it is, they're just great. You know, Chucky Roth at San Marcos, water polo. I mean, every girl or young woman. He's also the Santa Barbara City College coach women's polo. Not only does he win, but every female that I've talked to thinks of him as a father figure. I mean, it's just huh. amazing the impact he has. Wow. I mean, the, you know, why is water polo so good in this town? It's because of Chucky Roth and Mark Walsh and coaches like that because they invest in the kids. Isn't that and amazing? It's amazing. And yeah. we in Orange County play the best water polo. But it's not just X's and O's with those guys. Right. They actually, they really care. And it takes one person like that to, to make something like that happen. I know. That's an amazing thing oh, yeah. about the coaching profession. I know. And you, it's just amazing what they do. Chucky Roth, one more story about him, too. And I barely see him. So I mean, that's the kind of impact he's made just watching him covering his team. He took non-athletes at San Marcos. And there's a, across the street at San Marcos, there's a gym. I think it's Killer Bees or something like that. I forget. He took non-athletes there who were struggling and that with, with school, with physical fitness. He did a, a class with them. I did a story on it for a, a semester. All their grades went up. Their self-esteem went up. And really? he, it was just him investing in the youth. And it's just and, so and, good. And, I'm, you know, I, I don't want to get naming coaches, but there's yeah. so many coaches right. like that in this town. That's so great. We need to have him on the program. Chucky Roth. Chucky Roth. Yes. <laughs> um, what about what if you, if you look back over twenty five years? Is there one or two or whatever athletes that oh, stand out? Wow, I mean that's probably a tougher one. It's it's <laughs> hard. I mean, I, 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 you know, just I've gotten to know some really just in, in, incredible athletes that just you know. There's a Kyle Shotwell that played at Dos Pueblos, almost made it in the NFL. Actually, was on some you know fifty three man rosters. You know, maybe some practice squads, but the Shotwells, they've had four kids play sports here. Most of them at Cal Poly. Just just great people in the community. Just uh, Carrick DeHart played at UCSB. Oh, yeah. I lived across from him. I oh, just, really? He was just a great guy. He's done some incredible coaching, and he works at Channel Islands University now. I mean, just there's just so many athletes yeah. that are just incredible. Um, you know, 2020 has been so hard, but when Kobe Bryant died, yeah, that that was I almost felt like a family member died, yeah. and I don't he'd come here for camps. I heard, you that, know, yeah. and just it was great to interview him, and, you know, yeah. and just see how he was with the kids, and he was so involved in those camps, right? I mean, it's just like he was took a personal investment in that. Yeah, and I just loved loved seeing that and yeah. what he was going to do for the women's basketball game. Oh man, that hurts, it's you know. Something. And I'm again. I'm not even the Lakers aren't even my favorite team. So yeah. well, he's just, a Philly guy. Yeah, exactly. He is a <laughs> Philly guy. But, you yeah. know, it's just I love, you know, yeah. seeing athletes that are doing that off the court, too. Andre Agassi, I'm not even a huge tennis fan. Right. I mean, I watched the big slam, but the, that he started a, a school in Vegas in yeah. an academy. Right. You know, LeBron James doing that right. in Akron, Ohio, just. That's the kind of stuff that I like. That's, when the, that's the meaning. Yeah, I was stuff. so excited when Andre Agassi opened his 24-hour fitness club in Santa Barbara. You know, he has a, oh, a, right, right. ownership in that. This was many years ago. He came to town. I got to interview him just because, uh, you know, I got to talk to him about his, his, his academy oh, that he opened so up for the youth. So That's so good. That's, again, that's who I'm attracted to. Yeah. It's it's uh, I was, as I was reading about you this morning, it's just refreshing to see a guy like you who's kind of been a steady presence in a community 
who's on the TV set. It's a little bit like John Palminteri. I was yeah. thinking the yeah. same thing. Well, way less, but yeah. No, you <laughs> don't JP's, have the mustache. JP's prime time. Right, <laughs> right, you know? right. We need a name for you. What's your name? We'll call him with a name. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it is great. I think every community to kind of have a. You're kind of like the sports guy. You yeah. Know? John Palminteri is kind of like the. If I'm there's a crisis or an emergency, you're going to turn your TV on and you're looking for John Palminteri. You know, but you're the sports guy, which is a, which is a really great thing, and to have 25 years of steady you know it, consistency is great. very fortunate yeah. very fortunate and i you know honestly i still love what i do and that's what that's what's great about it you know even you know long days i i just look forward to going to work and and seeing what what out there to cover i love yeah. covering the games and i love covering human interest stories and yeah you know someone told me a long time ago it's a privilege to put on this microphone and talk about what you you're going to talk about every night and i I've always remembered that. That's really know? good. That's and there's, really good. there's a coach down south, too, and what motivates me. And, it, you know, it's John Mack. And I was out of his practice one day, and he told his kids, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Mm. And I've always tried to remember that. Like, mm. don't try to mail stuff in. Just try to really push yourself to get better yeah. even after 25 years. Right. It doesn't always work out that way, but... That's what I strive to do. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you for what, you did, what oh, you've done. I appreciate you having me. This yeah. is great. Nice to say hi to Delina. I a will. Great, I will. A great family, and we appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. All right. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>